Bear Bears podcast is back. NCAA Tournament Preview Edition. I'm your host, Bear Chris Felica, Jeff Schwartz, Sammy P. Will Hill are here. We're all here right off the bat. No, no happy talk to start things going. We got we got a lot of ground to cover. We got four regions to discuss uh, and, and many different games, many different uh, questions, topics, discussions within each of these regions. So uh, I guess we're going to just start, get, get right into it and uh, we'll, we'll start with the East region, which uh, I think everyone everyone has said, like, I don't know how the NCAA tournament selection committee has looked at these brackets and said, hey, I, I think the, the, the East by far is uh, just as, fa- as balanced as what you have in the West. You got the number one team in Ken Palm and UConn, the number four team in Ken Palm and Auburn, the number five team in Ken Palm and I and um and, and Iowa State and the number ten team in Ken Palm and Illinois all in that uh, in, in that region. So uh, the number one overall seed certainly did not get any any favors from the selection committee. So uh, if UConn is to become the first team to repeat since Florida in 2007, they will have earned it. And the interesting thing is that only four of the defending 15 champs have even reached the Sweet 16. So uh, th- 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 there's certainly some. Uh, some roadblocks ahead for the Huskies. So I, I guess, Jeff, I'll start with you. Um, in, the, in the East, I mean, we have UConn, we've got Iowa State, we've got Auburn, and, and we've got Illinois. Overall thoughts uh, on the East? Well, there's a lot of, good, a lot of good basketball things. My overall thought, guys, in general, is I don't think that the tournament selection committee followed Ken Palm or followed some of the analytics websites we use in the past, right? I mean, they sort of went off the beaten path for a lot of these things. And so I'm not sure, should, should we consider those numbers as, as heavily weighted moving forward? Because they sort of just not, not did what they wanted, but they didn't really look at at the analytics. And there are teams that got in that were in the 80s and teams that did get in there in the 20s. I mean, it doesn't matter so much as we preview right now where the official numbers are for these teams. Yeah, it was very nice of the committee not to put the Denver Nuggets in the East Committee with UConn, because if they could have, I think they would have. My goodness. I mean, Bear alluded to it. You've got, what, the Big Ten champ, the Big 12 champ, the SEC champ, uh, granted the conference tournaments, but they just stacked this bracket. Now, you can say UConn does get to play close to home. They get to play in Brooklyn. They get to play in Boston. But, like, they were the number one overall seed. They, they You figure they're playing for four and a half months. They sort of earn a little bit of an advantage at home. I don't know. I, I think I'd rather play at a neutral setting and not have home court and just have a normal bracket and not have to deal with that gauntlet. That being said, uh, they still are the best team. They are so, they have so many different ways to win. They can shoot. They have size. They have a championship coach. You know, they got the monkey off their back in terms of winning it last year. So there's not that much pressure on them, I, I wouldn't think. So uh, I still think they're getting through. You know, it's it's interesting. Their number dropped from what it was. I think Sunday morning, they're at plus 450, and then it was plus 420. It, it's like plus 380 in some spots where how does mm. the bracket come out and their number drops? That doesn't make sense to me. That draw was so tough. I, I don't get what people are betting. Maybe there's just more eyes on this stuff where people say, oh, the tournament's about to start. UConn's the best team. They become a public team. Sammy, maybe you can explain this, but I don't understand how you get the bracket and then we get a number drop on UConn here. You know, it was funny because when you see that region come out, and that was the first region they announced on the broadcast, you're like, holy cow, this is a bear of a region. But then you look at the power ratings, and you're like, all right, well, if UConn plays Illinois, the Lions may be seven and a half. If they play Iowa State, it's seven. If they play Auburn, it's five and a half. So I think to Will's point about the number going down, yes, on paper, it's a tough region, but UConn is still a double possession or a triple possession favorite in all of those games in that region. And Illinois can't stop UConn. Iowa State probably can't score on UConn. I think the toughest game bear and the lowest number, and I was talking to the guys at the Westgate, you know, that number against Auburn is probably five, five and a half. Yeah. The toughest game for them if they play Auburn. Yeah, exactly. That is a big if because we've seen a lot of money come in on Yale early on uh, against Auburn, and then certainly uh, a second round of game against uh, national runner-up San Diego State would be no uh, no easy task, I would think, for Auburn. I mean, not again, maybe not easy, but not certainly not a uh, a gimme. But you're right. Yeah, it, it, I I hate it because my two biggest future positions are on UConn and Auburn. So I'm going to lose oh. one of them in the Sweet 16. So I was really ecstatic to see those two uh, draw, drawn against each other. But I mean, look, they're, they're, look, Auburn does still have their knocks about winning, uh, be, be all these quad one wins. They did wind up winning the SEC tournament, but uh, we, we'll see if they can um, if they can get that far. Because if you do look at Bruce Pearl's four trips 
uh, as a top four seed uh, three of the four times they have lost in that second round. So uh, it's not a given that Auburn will get to the Sweet 16, but it, it, it is a given. You would think it is a given that they they should beat Yale. Auburn, of course, never losing a first round game. So uh, we, we mentioned a lot of these top seeds. One thing I want to kind of go through, uh, I, I guess we'll do it this way. Like we'll kind of go through and ask some questions uh, about each bracket, and then kind of at the at the very end, before we move on to another bracket, I'll ask about specific games or specific props that maybe you guys have played in East region. So I, I guess in the East, we'll, we'll just start like of the top three seeds in that in that region: uh, UConn, Iowa State, and Illinois. Uh, which one is the uh, most likely to be knocked out uh, in the first weekend? Uh, well, uh, well, I'll start with you. I like this Moorhead State team. I like the matchup for them because I think they were the first team to punch their ticket. It seems like a month ago, but it was two weeks ago. So they've had two weeks off the rest. I like fading these teams like Illinois that won their conference tournaments, all things being equal, because three games in three days, you know, knock, knock down, drag out fight after fight after fight, uh, close games. It takes a lot out of you. And then you have a quick turnaround here uh, and play a few days later. And Moorhead, I think, has the recipe. They're going to play slow. They have good guard play. We've seen that number trickle down from 13 and a half to 11 and a half. Um, so, look, it's become pretty common every year that we see. I mean, it used to be 12-5 was an upset. Now we're seeing some 13s, 14s, 50. Like, last year we got a 15 and a 16 to win. So, uh, 14 winning is not outlandish. I'm, I'm I'm sure somebody will post a prop will a 14 seed or lower win. I, I think that would be an interesting one because it seems like every year, more often than not, we, we do get a major upset. So, not saying this is going to be the one, but I, I certainly like them plus the points. I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, that's a three or four point game with five minutes to go. And who knows, Moorhead can get hot and steal the game. I think they have the component to at least make that game close, uh, Sammy. Yeah, Illinois doesn't turn anybody over, and that's sort of the bugaboo for Moorhead. Yeah. Moorhead is sort of a fast-paced, they can be frantic, you know, they can turn the ball over, but Illinois doesn't really turn anybody over, so that's a tough matchup, and I really want to take seven in the first half, too. We're starting to see those first half numbers pop up. Illinois has been a very slow-starting team, um, even in the Big Ten Championship. You know, they're, they're really close with Wisconsin, uh, you know, 10 minutes to go in the game, they're almost down 10 points against Wisconsin. Illinois has been a late charging team. So I do have Illinois going far in the bracket, but I, I did bet Moorhead plus 13, and I'm looking first half. I do have Drake knocking off Iowa State, though, in terms of bracket. Uh, I love that team. I, I love their efficiency. I love their ability to play both ways. And I think Will nailed it. You know, my favorite thing to do in these tournaments is to short the teams that won conference tournaments. And we have three of them in this region, right? Well, and UConn. You got four of them. I'm not short in UConn, though. You got Auburn, you got Illinois, and you got Iowa State. And it's funny. I think a lot of people are going to And Drake. Out. And Drake's, Drake's the conference one or two. Right. But of the, of the four conference. major seeds, you have four conference tournament champions. And I think a lot of people are going to look at what happened in that one game against Houston and go, wow. Iowa State's pretty good, and I I got him losing to Drake. So to answer the question, they're my first big seed uh, in that bracket to go out. And and certainly there would there would be a little bit of a, a precedent there. Like remember last year, Marquette was unranked in the preseason, got that number two seed, got bounced in the second round. If, if you go back in the history since '85, I think there've been 36 teams that got a one or a two seed that were unranked in the preseason. I mean, none of them have reached the Final Four. So uh, uh, Iowa State, oh, not only in the toughest bracket, they also have history to to uh, up against them. And I think if you look at the what the games that Iowa State has played under uh, TJ in the tournament, I don't think they've topped like 60. I, I have the note written down here uh, somewhere about it. How, yeah, fewer than 60 points in all four of their NCAA tournament games under, under Otzelberger. So like that, and have allowed 60 points once. So uh, low, lower scoring game potentially does help, help Drake. Jeff, what, which team did you think would be the most likely to uh, get bounced early there? I feel like a lot of us are going to have repeat answers. Um, I put Iowa state on here, losing to Drake. Sammy has the same exact thing Bear, To add to your note about one and two seeds that are unranked to start the season, they average less than two wins in the tournament. So they're not even getting to the Sweet 16. To your point about Marquette, to the point about Iowa State being unranked to start the season, they don't make it to, to the next weekend. That's the first question, right? Who gets bounced early? And to me, it's Iowa State. You mentioned Drake. They shoot the ball well. Iowa State, offensively, efficiency-wise, sort of near the bottom of the power teams that are left. 
um, in the tournament right now as well. So don't look, don't look at what happened on Sunday or was it Saturday when they beat Houston? Like to, to everyone's point, those are, you know, those are, those happened, but I'm not sure they're predictive of, of the future. So I have Iowa state losing to Drake um, in that second round on Saturday. And, and the interesting thing is too, we're going to move into the next a, a 12 seed or lower that you think is likely to uh, win its first round game. I, I don't know if, if North Dakota state or a, or South Dakota State, rather, I should say, the Jackrabbits, not the Bison. Sorry, everybody up there in, uh, <laughs> in, in, in the Dakotas. I, I know, I know how much the Dakota Dakota marker rivalry is, and it's a. Uh, I, I, next time I go up there, I don't want to get uh, get yelled at. But uh, I, I think South Dakota State, I mean, might be worth a, just a a dark throw with sprinkle and maybe plus the points. Kind of piggybacking on what. Sammy P said about these teams that get hot and win conference tournaments. But but like I said, Iowa State, typically a lower scoring team. South Dakota State was the only one of the 15s that was actually highly regarded in their conference. I think they were the only top two seed of the 15s. The rest were were, were long shots. And remember, Iowa State kind of did this in uh, in 2001, it was, right, when they uh, when they got upset uh, by Hampton in a 215 game. So wouldn't be the first time the Cyclones have been knocked off as a um, as a big favorite in in the uh, in the first round in the two fifteen games, uh, do I think it will ultimately happen? No, but I do think of those 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I think I think if you're looking for a little bit of a uh, a risk reward type deal and got a little bit of money to throw away, maybe taking a little a little price on uh, South Dakota State might be worth a look. Will any uh, up first round upset that you like? I, I know you mentioned Moorhead before, but do you think they can win? I think they could. Like Sammy said, Illinois doesn't turn you over. They don't get stops. Um, boy, Yale is interesting just because they do play smart and they were super, they're super lucky to be here. I mean, you're down six with 23 seconds left to not only win the game, but to win it in regulation, just a miracle finish, but they play smart. They really rebound the hell out of the ball on the defensive glass. They got tested a little bit out of conference. So they're going to, uh, Auburn's obviously going to be a major advantage in terms of athleticism, but Yale is at least smart enough to know where their advantages and disadvantages are. And maybe they can muck the game up where they frustrate Auburn, force them into some misses and clean up the misses and, and keep the game close we've seen these ivy teams be tough we saw yale you know upset baylor boy hard to believe that's what eight years ago now we saw princeton win two games last year i think the ivy might be a little better than people think so i wouldn't be shocked again you're just you're looking for a game that is uh, like a one point game with six minutes to go. Then the top seed gets tight. The the uh, lower seed has house money. It's uh you know they they can play fast and loose. You're looking for just a tight game late, and then the underdogs to steal it. So Yale is one that's interesting too. Yeah, I'm following the money in this one, and I I know it's very popular to take twelves over fives, but uh, I did write a story about uh, you know ten things to follow heading into the uh, first round, and the first ten thousand dollar limit bet they took at South Point there was UAB plus eight against hmm. San Diego State. And they opened eight. And that number is now coming down through seven. A lot of six and a half in the market as we tape this on a Tuesday morning. Uh, that San Diego State team, I think, is is good. But you, you also have the illusion that, oh, they went to the title game last year. You know, and like last year's Last year doesn't really matter when it comes to this year's bracket. And I'm telling you, they, they took a limit bet at plus eight. They took another limit bet. I think the guy probably got back in line and bet him again at plus seven and a half. So two limit bets right off the open on UAB plus eight and plus seven and a half. That opened my eyes. Uh, so I do actually on my bracket, I have UAB beating San Diego State in the 12-5 at Spokane. I love it. I I was uh, I had my apps open uh, when all the lines dropped. It was my first time getting to do this. I've not been in Vegas during this time. Uh, one of the websites put UAB at minus ten. I mean, should be plus ten originally for like a huh. minute. It wow. got bet all the way down immediately to like eight and a half, seven and a half. I was surprised because another website had seven and a half immediately. So uh, to Sammy's point, that's where the money came in right, right away. I put Morehead State down here. Will kind of put in already why I think they could win. Uh, in, in the first round, really good on defense, can shoot threes well. Those are things I, I look at, right? Turnover rate, can you play defense? Can you make threes? Can you shoot foul shots? And it sets up well for Moorhead State to come away with a win. Last year, no one seeds in the Final Four. We, we had, what, uh, a four, oh, I don't know, a four UConn, a couple of fives, and a nine. So um, if there is going to be a team of uh, seeded fourth or uh, or lower to reach the Final Four from here, uh, is everybody's answer Auburn? 
I would think so. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. I'll put, I'll put Auburn. Well, that's not the question, Sammy. The question is a four seed or lower can reach the final four. You got to no, give me. You, you not can't give me. You, you can't no. give me. You, you can't give me UConn. That's the next question we're going to ask. I was going to say so. So that, so that would be the the, the deck, <laughs> right? We all have UConn coming out of this region. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I I do too. Even though I I do think. Well, we want to maybe take a ride up to that. Uh, if we get an Auburn UConn Sweet Sixteen game, that, that wouldn't be the. Uh, it wouldn't be the worst thing to go take a ride up to Boston, maybe go check out. That would be a what? A, th- a Thursday, Friday, Thursday or Friday next week, or we wouldn't know. Yeah, if I'm getting I, don't, I don't think we. I don't think we know yet. Yeah, I have to, I have to take a look at that. I know you guys mentioned a couple of plays uh, in, in that region already as well. I, I took Northwestern plus the plus three, two and a half is pretty much where it is now um, against FAU. The FAU, we talked about them throughout the year, just not being the same team. We thought maybe they'd turn it on in the AAC conference tournament uh, last week, but clearly getting knocked off by Temple didn't happen. Uh, we obviously don't know the, the complete health of Bubui, but uh, I, I think if we keep waiting for FAU to turn this thing on like they did last year, uh, it's not going to happen. I think the public will be a uh, on FAU thinking that's going to continue. So I did take uh, I did take Northwestern plus the three. Uh, I I missed the number on BYU. I thought about taking BYU, but I see that number's up to like nine now uh, in some places. Again, nine and a half against Duquesne. Uh, I think that's a little rich. So uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stay away from that. But the only one and. Uh, I know uh, I might not be getting the best of the number now with UAB, but uh, Sammy's Sammy's info there on UAB was certainly uh, interesting as well. And I'm going to take, uh, and I see a 17 out there with the uh, with with the Jackrabbits, so I will take uh, South Dakota State plus 17 as well, assuming that Iowa State uh, will be in a lower scoring game. But uh, the only one I have definitely in pocket now uh, is Northwestern uh, plus the three. So. Uh, is uh is Drake plus six fifty to make the Sweet Sixteen worth anyone? Because we just talked about Iowa State not getting to uh, the the Sweet Sixteen. Is Drake that team on that side? Are they going to they beat Washington State and then beat Iowa? Is that a number worth taking? Or if you just bet them on the money line and roll it over, that's more value. Uh, that, 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 that that got my attention. Uh, I'm I'm never I'm never opposed to to taking one of those seven ten winners to reach a Sweet Sixteen because I I think. This group of like the twos and threes is historically weak, uh, so I, I think we could get some upsets. And I know obviously Sammy, let, Sammy likes Drake. You guys, can you guys take the Drake? It's funny you bring that up because Drake actually got the money, you know, Sunday and Monday, and those are not little old ladies with blue hair, Jeff, like Marge Simpson <laughs> taking Drake on Sunday and Monday, and to go from a plus price on the money line to now favored to win that game. I think the math has changed just a little bit. I think you should just pop them on the uh, Sweet 16 market outright. You probably get a better shake right now. I did. I did while you were talking. I, I, did, <laughs> I think it's a good. I think it's a good wager to take. I'm, I'm glad. Again, this is my whole, my world is is brand new. I had to tell my wife guys that I actually gambled. She like didn't really know. It's just shocking. But I was like, "Hun, you know, like legal sports wagering is in North Carolina now. If you see some some deposits into different accounts from our, our checking account, that is why. So we're like we're fully on board now. We're full steam ahead." She really didn't know. I don't know. I don't know why. It's been my job for like five years now. She had no idea. You got to get her signed up. Get her some of the bonuses. You got to really. The, uh, the really bonuses. Getting... I. I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed. I. It's just like not great. Not awesome. I did. I did hit a Scotty Scheffler like 100 percent boost on the, the other day. So that thank you, Wyndham Clark, for missing that putt. That, that was. I appreciated oh, that. Thank. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate that. You would Wyndham Clark? He's an Oregon Duck. I should root for I him. Had Wyndham I had Clark is Sheffler. fifty-three to one. You, yeah. Oregon Duck. He's a duck, man. I should have been no for one, him. But... No wonder he missed the putt. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the West, well, and we went. I'm not going to sit here and uh, labor anymore about any any bad golf beats. Moving on to the West, where the number one seed is North Carolina. Uh, Tar Heels lost to uh, NC State. The Wolfpack made that run. In the ACC tournament, like if there if there were a number one seed, I think most likely to get bounced early. I think it's UNC. I think they are clearly the weakest of the one seeds here. This is this is a region that I could like. I made the joke on Twitter earlier in the week about the old Brewster's Millions uh, 
movie about n- none of the above. Like I think each of these top four seeds are super weak, and I, I think if you if you're gonna have a complete dart throw type team to reach the final four, uh, I, I think this is the one to do it in. Uh, so I, I know they're the number one seed, but we've had a bunch of number one seeds bounce before the Sweet 16 uh, in in recent years. You've you've had since 2010. You've had 12 number one seeds losing the first or second round. So um, it, it's not uncommon. We had two last year, obviously Purdue losing in the first round. Um, and then there, there, there was one more that I'm forgetting right now. It wasn't what Houston Houston got there. Purdue lost in the first round. Who lost in the second round? Um, I need to check my bracket really quickly. Kansas, quick. maybe? Was it Kansas? Uh, no, Arkansas beat Kansas. I forget if that was a 1-8. I'm trying to remember, too. That was, that was a 1-8. Yes, it was okay. Kansas. Yep, you're, you're correct. Thank, thank you, Will. For, I, I used to know this crap all off the top of my head, like, and, and now I can't even remember last year. I knew there were two. Obviously, Purdue and, and, and Kansas got over, over overlooked because uh, of, the, of the Purdue shocking loss. But, but North Carolina, I think, is a team that uh, that second-round game, whether it's against Mississippi State or Michigan State, uh, that is a dangerous game because uh, UNC does not close games out well. Um, they, they don't turn you over. I, I, I think North Carolina is living on borrowed time, and I'd be very, very surprised uh, if they even reach the Final Four. Uh, I did bet Mississippi State plus two and a half right off the bat in Sammy's piece uh, that he wrote on Sunday night. He, he asked what the first bet I made was, and I did grab two and a half with Mississippi State. Obviously, that's long gone now. Uh, I think it's one in most places, maybe one and a half uh, as well with Michigan State being favored. But uh, if, if I'm looking at one of those top first top three seeds to get bounced early, uh, I think it's North Carolina, Will. I'm with you on Mississippi State, and I think people are going to see Michigan State, the uniform, the reputation, and they're just going to on rope pick Michigan State. This is not a vintage Michigan State team. And just because, like Sammy said, just because things have happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen this year. I like this Mississippi State team. They're long. They're athletic. They're really hard to get good shots against. They've got a good point guard in Howard. I think Jans is a good coach. This game reminds me a little bit of Florida Atlantic Memphis last year where Anyone can win. It's a toss-up game, but whoever wins is live. And we saw Atlanta, uh, Florida Atlantic win a, a coin toss game. Really, Memphis was up one on the ball uh, with the ball on the ground, trying to call timeout. They called the jump ball. Florida Atlantic got it, uh, scored, and went on to the final four. That could have easily been Memphis. I think this is a similar game where this is going to be a tight game, close. But whoever wins, I think, is live. And if you know, let's say Mississippi State beats North Carolina and, and gets past Michigan State, then anything can happen in the bracket. It, it opens wide up, and there really isn't a number one seed in this bracket because UNC is was labeled the one, but they're ninth in Ken Palm. They're closer to like a three seed. So Mississippi state, I think 25 to one is the best price I've seen out there. I'm probably better off with the money line roller rollover. I know people it's easier said than done in terms of executing that, but uh, I think Mississippi state is very live here. The hell of a call. If you guys can knock off Carolina early, um, the question who goes down first weekend, maybe Arizona against Dayton, maybe, I would love for that to happen. You know, the Tommy Lloyd oh, thing is very interesting. Um, I'm going to just tell you guys on Mississippi State, though. I didn't love it, but you guys clearly love it. So I'm going to just, I'm going to tell the crew on that one. Mississippi State, Carolina, give it to me. All right, guys, I'm going with Arizona to be the top three seed to lose out in the West because they just have proven year over year not to not get it done, even going back to when Sean Miller was coach, their, their last three appearances have not made it out of the Sweet 16 despite being a high seed. We know Tommy Lloyd, the current coach, two and two the last two years as a one and two seed, but 0 and 4 against the spread. They continually sort of come up short in these moments. I don't know if the USC game a couple weeks ago really matters. They had clinched the fact of uh, number one overall seed, but losing to Oregon, a team that had, had handled twice this year. I do like the addition of Caleb Love to this team. That's what they missed last season. They also just have long moments where they don't score. We saw against Arizona. We saw in the tournament against last season, and, and I just don't know if their style of play really matches up well to what teams do well in the postseason. So I'm going to take Arizona here. And to prove it otherwise, guys, that's going to be my pick. Most years until Arizona, look, Arizona can prove me wrong this year. Go to his team, go to lead eight. The next year, I won't pick them. But right now, uh, I think Arizona, again, Tommy Lloyd 0 4 against the spread in his four games. Again, one and two seed. They're, they're back in the same spot as they've been in the past that haven't got done. So I'll go with Arizona. Yeah, they, they, they certainly have. And it would be certainly be no surprise for me to see them underperform again here. Completely untrustable team. Uh, 12 seed or lower to potentially win a, a first round game. Again, this is a 
wide open region. I I'm going to go with Charleston only because again Alabama like is one of those high high variance teams because. They shoot a ton of threes. If they make them, they're going to run you off the court. Uh, if they miss, the, you're, you're going to lose like, like they did last year. So, uh, again, it, it's one of those things as well where kind of similar styles and Alabama has potentially the better players. But uh, tr- Charleston it, it, plus a big number, why not, Will? I'm with you. Three pointers from both teams. Bama is going to keep everybody in with their defense. They play terribly uh, just defensively. I know they're three and rim and everything on offense. But if those threes aren't falling like last year against San Diego state, where I think they're like four of 37, uh, four of 37, something crazy bad from three against San Diego state where they got knocked out. Uh, anything can happen. If Charleston's hitting them and Bama's not, it, it could easily be Charleston. One, I would stay away from sometimes it's important to find the ones you want. No part of do not pick Colgate. I'd be shocked if Colgate can hang around. This is not a vintage Colgate team. I know they've dominated that conference. They've been competitive in some of these NCAA tournament appearances the last you know decade or so. I think they played Wisconsin tough. They led our, Arkansas, big for a half before Arkansas pulled away. They don't have the athletes. They don't have the offense. Baylor is going to run them off the court. So uh, Colgate would be one I would stay away for. I like your Charleston pick. Sammy, what do you think? Yeah, Bama is uh, is our guy T-Hold wrote in his sheet bear. He called Alabama a red flag team <laughs> because they don't get stops. And you need to get stops in this tournament to get into that second weekend. And I love their offense but their defense leaves a lot to be desired. And look at that total too. I mean, it opened around 171, 172 and just got blasted higher. I mean, this could be a game 190 points maybe um, if it goes the way it could go. So uh, Bama's inability to get stops is very problematic. Is is Grand Canyon over St. Mary's too too logical? Is 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 everyone's favorite sort of, 12-5 12-5 upset, is it? Is it too much to go in on that game? No, I don't, I don't think it's too much to go in. I just worry about, like, the, stylistically, like, that's – St. Mary's, like, isn't the type of team that I think is going to – is the best matchup for Grand Canyon. Like, an experienced team with good guards, like, well-coached, slow down. Like, I, I don't know if that's the best type of – upset possibility. I think if Grand Canyon would have drew someone else, I would really like, but I, I don't think St. Mary's is the type of team that uh, matches is going to be a matchup problem or, or, or really, or, or, or I should say other way around. I, I don't think Grand Canyon is going to, is going to be able to really pull them out of their game. I actually like St. Mary's in that game. Yeah, those are two teams I was looking to play on. It's unfortunate they they happen to meet each other. I feel like that happens a lot. It's happened a couple times this year. Like James Madison, I like, but Wisconsin, I kind of like in the way they're playing. The committee has a habit of just uh, pairing these teams up. I know Alan Boston, famous uh, college basketball better, <laughs> you know, has his theories about, he's got a lot of theories, but uh, theories about why the committee does this and these teams that are bad for ratings, they pair them up. So one of them is automatically knocked out and these mid-majors don't get as far because the Blue Bloods are better for ratings. So I don't I don't know how much truth there is to it, but it does seem like, you know, these, uh, these feisty little underrated teams teams seem to square off in yep. round one a lot. Boston, Boston Red on Twitter. Yeah, I, mean, I remember that, that was one. It's funny you brought up the uh, the FAU Memphis game uh, because yep. he, he he was all over that last year, too, when he saw that matchup in the first round. But it's an answer to your question, Jeff. Can I see it happen? Yeah, I could. But I, I don't think it's the most. I think the most popular one is going to be McNeese uh, as a 12-5. But uh, could it happen? Sure. I, right, well, last year, none of the 12s won. That was right. one of the one of the bigger misnomers that every every year you got to pick a twelve over a five. So uh, maybe maybe this year we'll see that we, we, we'll we'll see that reverse. Sammy, did I did I get your team to lose? Yeah, I went Charleston, Charleston over Bama. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I knew I knew I knew I knew Will did. I just I couldn't remember if I uh, if I followed up with you on that. I'm, I'm, I'm I will say you. though, if Marys loses the Grand Canyon, I'll cry because I have Marys in the Final Four. So oh. Could it I happen? Like that call. I, could I, I, it happen? Yes. I thought about going there too. I thought about it. <laughs> Anything could happen. I love when Jeff like looks at his bracket. And he's like, wait a minute. He's doing the math. He's like, uh, uh, uh I got Mary's. Yeah, I got Mary's over Baylor. That's my chaos region. Bear bottom left. I, chaos. I haven't yeah. filled it out yet though, Sammy. So it's it's still <laughs> blank. Still blank. But I have I have it right here in front of me, buddy. No, no notes today though. I don't have. Oh, here's my pen. I'm gonna take some notes if I need to. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah, those Missouri Valley first half unders last show were just but it, it, yeah, we it, cook it, on those or what? Holy cow! Buddy, I'm just sitting in Mexico firing away first half unders. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't even watch the game, so just raking in the money, guys. It's unbelievable. So I, I think if we we've 
all think this is kind of a chaos bracket. If we had to pick a, a team seated fourth or lower to reach the final four, obviously, Sammy just mentioned St. Mary's. Uh, Will, who, who would you go with? Mississippi State. I think that if things break open, if they can beat North Carolina, I did think about going with St. Mary's, but I like the Mississippi State defense. I like their athleticism. I like their point guard. I like their coach. Something different. Usually you get one kind of out of nowhere. I feel like that's an out of nowhere one. St. Mary's would be two, but I, I'm going to go here with Mississippi State. Now, I, I know Mountain West teams seated eighth or lower. They're six and 39 in the tournament, but you got New Mexico is an 11 seed who caught fire in the conference tournament. I know we've talked about how we'd like to play against those teams, but you draw a Clemson team in the first round who I don't think is very good. You, you potentially get Baylor. I think Baylor will win that first round game uh, against Colgate. And I think you're looking at New Mexico, Baylor in the second round. And um, it's an interesting game. I, I would give New Mexico a chance in that game. So if you were looking for a uh, a price to win this region and get to the final four, I, I think New Mexico is another team. I think they're around 25, 30 to one um, to, to potentially win the that's at least what I saw them on Sunday at 20 foot or Monday morning, rather uh, 25 to one. I don't know what it is now. Um, I, I think New Mexico it would be worth the play there. Uh, Cause I think, I think that New Mexico, a New Mexico Baylor winner um, would be the team that has a really good chance of getting to the final four. Do we have um, like, a, so we have a day in New Mexico with a chance to get to the elite eight. And then one of those, and then Dayton, sure could. Dayton wins that game and, Beats Mississippi State for like uh, for Final Four appearance. Is that is that too wild? No, nothing. You could, <laughs> you could tell me pretty much anything except for like Long Beach State versus Howard in the Elite Eight, and, and like I would like buy it because that's how 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 schizo obviously Arizona is. How little I think of North Carolina in terms of them getting far. Alabama, like, like this is going to be a we so we say it. I say it. You no, know, this will be a crazy region. So of course, uh, it, it'll play to. It'll play to Chuck. So, so will you got? Will you have uh, Mississippi State? Sammy, you got St. Mary's. Jeff, you have. I'm gonna go with Dayton. Why not? Ooh, it, throwing out there. Grand. I mean, I, I think I think Arizona loses early. I think Clemson loses early. Alabama loses early. St. Mary's loses early. We just talked about Mississippi State being North Carolina. I'm mean, not a lot of teams left on the board, guys. I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you guys. So, uh, yeah. and uh, I just go. So Dayton's still left on the board for us. But it's interesting. Explain. If you look at Dayton under Anthony Grant, all four games that Anthony Grant has coached at in, in the tournament as a head coach, um, VCU and, and Bama, all of them have been decided by one uh, by two points or fewer or an overtime. So expect that uh expect that Dayton Nevada game to be a uh, a close one. I'm gonna go with Baylor just because I ultimately can't get there uh, with, with an 11 seed getting to the Final Four. I think I think of those top four seeds, I, I, I trust Baylor the most with the head coach who's gotten to the Final Four before, won a national championship. Uh, the, the Big Twelve, obviously, uh, probably the deepest conference in the in the league. The team that they've clearly shown they can play with higher higher level teams. Had that great game against Houston uh, earlier this year. So give me Baylor to be the team that comes out of the West in the South. Obviously, Houston, the number one seed, probably were the best team last year before they had all of their injuries um, and, and then get knocked out in the Sweet 16 by Miami. Kind of a similar deal this year. Lost some bench depth, had the brutal game in the, uh, in, the, in the Big 12 against Iowa State. And either that's a good thing for getting it out of your system or B, it's a bad thing because it reminds us all of on Houston's worst day, their inability to score against a team that can play some defense um, it makes them very, very, very vulnerable. Uh, Will, which side of the fence are you on on Houston here, which in terms of that that performance? Good to get out of the system. They'll be fine. Or red light? It, it's a red flag. There's too many of these for them. Like I can't get – I know it's a couple of years ago – that game against Villanova, which my eyes are still recovering from, was it 50 to 44? Last year, Miami ran them out of the building. I just, I worry with them too. They're so referee dependent where they're so handsy. They're so physical on defense where you can call a foul or not call a foul on any play. 
And if you get a, a referee a crew that is calling a lot of fouls, you get them in the bonus early, things like that. They just, and I don't, I don't know if they have enough shot making to string six of these together against good teams. So I do like them. I, I laid the, uh, the points against Longwood. I don't think, I think they'll smother Longwood. I think they'll come in there. Uh, if you're just talking about against the spread, like in a bad mood and, you know, Longwood team total under probably good. I could see Houston winning that game 77 to 40. They're a bit of a bully, but after that, like Nebraska is a sneaky, good team uh, in the second round. Um, I'm looking to fade them. I'd love to pick Florida to come out of this bracket, but losing the big guy, I think hurts them. They're such an offensive rebounding oriented team and those not getting those second chances is a big component. So uh, I'm not a fan of Houston, Sammy. I don't know if you feel the same way. I'm not either. They're going to have that game eventually where they score 59 and lose. It just, yep. it happens almost every year, but poor, can we talk about poor Longwood? I mean, Holy cow. Longwood gets to the tournament and they got to face a Houston team that just got blasted <laughs> in the conference tournament. And I, I hate that we we did a spaces on Monday night and I had a bunch of guys on there who are very good at betting basketball and we bet Houston minus 14 and minus 14 and a half in the first half because um, that could be a game. We could flip that thing on at halftime and it could be 42 to 17 or something. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's one of the best bets of the entire first round is Houston in the first half. Um, that number opened like 22 and a half. It's been blasted up toward 25, but I mean, how many points, Bear, is Longwood going to score against Houston in the first time? I mean, I, yeah. I think that is such a good bet. It's probably going to close 16. I don't know that I want to lay 16, but you could lay 15 right now, first half Cougars. Yeah, I was going to say that. You could, you could look up and that could be like 37-15 or something. And, and the good thing about, at least in terms of Houston, it's, a, it's one of the later games that night. Uh, in in Memphis, so it's not going to be one of those uh, early empty arena, uh, just just kind of waking up like like Houston will be, will will be ready to play in that game. But yeah, that that's a yeah that that's something that I would I'm actually going to fire on here in yeah, a sec. So I, I, I would, in, Do it uh, now, man. Do it now. I'm doing it right now. No I'm looking. It's going to be way higher. How about this? Okay. How about just 52 for a team total for Longwood? How are they getting to 53? Like if Longwood scores 53 to, points, 70, it, it, it's 77 49, maybe yeah. Yeah, that's like a very logical final. Yeah. Yeah. How's Longwood getting a 50? Bad, oh, bad, oh. bad, bad draw for Longwood. Poor Longwood. <laughs> <laughs> I got Houston in minus 20, so I'll take it. Because what's it at? What's it now? 23? 24 and a half. 24 and a half. Yeah. Uh, cut, to, I, cut to us Thursday night when it's 41 40 Longwood at the half. <laughs> throwing things across the room. I, don't think so. uh, However, I love this look, game. If you look at these top three seeds in here, you got Houston the one, Marquette the two, Kentucky the three. I, Will, you mentioned the, the, the Nebraska AM game. I, I would put Houston is the top three seed very uh, most likely to not make the Sweet 16 just because A&M, like, like they just play, they can play an ugly game. I mean, they don't shoot the ball well at all, but but the, but they always find themselves in close games. Uh, Nebraska with Hoiberg, like they can score points. Like I think that second round matchup for Houston uh, is very dangerous, more so that, that I think Kentucky against Texas Tech or uh, Marquette against a potentially shorthanded Florida team. Yeah, Nebraska a and another game where it's like, damn, I really I like both of these yeah. teams, I think, more than the market, and they squared them up against each other, so I don't know where to go there. I guess Nebraska, you mentioned Hoiberg. What a, what a hell of a job. I mean, that's not an easy place to win, to, to – you know, win basketball games in Nebraska, recruit there, et cetera. Um, A&M, though, they, they showed life against Florida. They, they couldn't hold up second half. Florida just went past them, um, and that was just a, a really exciting game. But Texas and and m did shoot the ball really well that first half against Florida. I think they scored like 50-something points. So if you can just make some threes, I mean, their three-point numbers were awful uh, during the regular season. But if they got by Nebraska, whoever wins that game. But if A&M can get there and just, you know, shoot 35% from three, something like that, with the rest of their team, the rest of their roster, I agree. Whoever comes out of that game is live. Can your Kentucky Wildcats play enough defense to advance to the second weekend? I hope in this so. Bracket. I hope so. If they don't, I will uh I will be in trouble. <laughs> I think the bosses at Fox might take me outside and spank me <laughs> if Kentucky loses the Oakland. I've been thinking about this team for four months, man. And I, I saw the draw, and I, I think it's a good draw, actually, you know, because you avoid, you know, avoid this thunderous number one. My my big concern was that we were gonna get Kentucky and Yukon in the East region, and I was just gonna cry. 
But, I mean, Houston's certainly beatable. Uh, Kolek at Marquette, we don't know how efficient he's going to be with the oblique. I think that obviously changes things in that region. Um, you know, the question was which number one or two or three goes down. I don't think any of them do. That's a cop out. But this is a region that I think is pretty chalky. I got one, two, three, four uh, in the Sweet 16. So nothing chaotic here. But if if Kentucky can't crack the two, three zone at Oakland, they don't deserve to win the title. <laughs> I, I like Greg Campy. I think Greg Campy is a great guy. But Kentucky has four first round picks. And if you can't solve the two, three zone at Oakland, <laughs> I will be very, very disappointed. So we 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 think this will be a, a a pretty chalky. Is there a team seated twelfth or lower that you, you think potentially could? could if, if Vermont is, I have Vermont. Threes, uh, could they beat Duke? Like I, I don't know. I don't think they could I, score enough. They have the components. Like they play good defense. They're yes. going to slow the game down. That might be a good under game. I just don't know if they make enough. I just don't know if they have enough firepower to actually get over the finish line. That feels like a game. Like if you like the Vermont, maybe you take them in the first half. Maybe you take the under, but that just feels like a game where, you know, maybe Duke's uh, Vermont's hanging around Duke's up like three or four late. And then they just go on a run, which Vermont can't answer. And they end up like pulling away at the end. So maybe first half of Vermont, I just don't know if they have enough punch on offense. Maybe it's James Madison. Let's let's talk about them for a second. I was sitting at a at a spot last night in Vegas, and one odds maker who's very sharp said he makes Madison minus one against Wisconsin. Now that's one man's opinion. Hmm. I I respect this guy though a lot, and you know if they can beat Wisconsin, you know that's a team that's played thirty four times this year, only has three losses, and I think you know there's a lot of sexy teams right now. There's a lot of love for. You know, the Grand Canyons. There's a lot of love for, uh, you know, the Samfords. I think I think James Madison's a little sexy, but when you hear a Vegas guy go, I made Madison one against Wisconsin, you're like, wait a minute. Maybe it's I need to overthink five, this. Five and a half, right? Yeah. yeah five well, and a half, yeah. He thinks that number's going away. He 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 thinks there's some there's some dummying going on. Because remember, when we saw this number on Sunday night, it was Wisconsin as low as minus three and a half. And they laid it up, but at five and a half, he is he is adamant that it's coming back. So maybe I bet a little five and a half. Maybe I bet a lot of five and a half. Who can really know? <laughs> I, I I'll just say this. Um, I Bill Krakenberger texted me immediately at when the lines came out, and he took JMU immediately. So like that was his no. That's the first thing he texted me was JMU. So I think to Sammy's point, people in Vegas are very aligned on on JMU in this game. Last three Sun Belt teams that were a, a 12, by the way, did pull the uh, the 12 5 upset. So there's a little bit of a uh, historical trend there. We need an additional group chat where we got Crack Man. It's the four of us and Crack. We need to spice it up a little. Add the Crack Man. <laughs> uh, you're not getting much spice from him. You're just getting. I, 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 I think I think Crack I think Crack is a uh, is a WhatsApp or a uh, a Telegram guy. Okay. Uh, oh, for I, sure. I, yeah. I, I don't. I don't think he does the, the general. Every, every communication I've had with him has been uh, on uh, on Telegram. I think. I, I don't, does Crack actually have a real phone number? He mm -hmm. does, because we do radio together, and so I have to. I do have to text him from time to time. Um, but no, yeah, real number. No, JMU is his. JMU is his first thing he texts me. So uh, I took it because I'm not a dummy. <laughs> Again, Wisconsin. In other words, they they play at it. They're a team that I have not been able to figure out all year long. Like I, I can't. I can't get on the right side of them. I should probably just stay away from this game. I liked Northwestern against them in the in the Big Ten t tournament. Lost. I I just can't. I can't find my level with the Badgers. So I'll just sit here and root for uh for Sammy hypothetically. If hypothetically Sammy took JMU plus five and a half hypothetically, I'll I'll root for that. <laughs> if there if there was a team fourth seated fourth or lower to come out of here and reach the uh, the final four. Um, I think it could be Texas Tech. My, my man Pop, my man Pop Isaacs. I think I love Texas Tech against NC State. Uh, it's an NC State team that was very close to losing to Louisville. They needed a Virginia utter meltdown at the free throw line to, to win that game. I mean, yeah, having a week off in theory, you should. You should be able to bounce back and play. I don't. I don't think it's a a, a thing where NC State's out of gas. I think it's more of where the hell did this run come from? Uh, from what we saw all year from NC State and getting a couple of um, 
fortunate situations there with, uh, with Louisville and then the uh, the Virginia. I, I, I like Tech. Again, I think it's a team that defensively, if they can slow Kentucky down a little bit and force Kentucky to play a little defense, that could potentially be a bad matchup for Kentucky, even though the game would be in Pittsburgh and Calipari, I'm sure we'll have a million fans there uh, as well. But if, if I were looking to go way off the grid here and pick someone uh, outside of Kentucky or Houston to get to the Final Four, uh, Tech isn't the worst, Deb. I wrote down Texas Tech as well. Thanks for reading my notes, Bear. Um, they make they also make their foul shots, which I think is really important. Good Going point. way back to the beginning of the show when you mentioned Yale Brown, Brown doesn't shoot their foul shots well. Like they're 60% at the end of that game. They didn't make their foul shots. We saw, uh, was it um, uh, NC State against who they played the, before? Um, uh, was it NC State or th that uh, they were playing someone that missed their foul shots again? NC State was able to come back. Like this is what teams do. Te Texas Tech makes their foul shots, which is important Virginia, to winning tournament you games. Well, Virginia, yes, Virginia, yes, Virginia. Um, it's important to make your foul shots, and Tech makes their foul shots. Yeah, I, I think Jeff brings up a good point. Not only are you are you looking for a team that makes their foul shots, but just betting strategy, tournament strategy in general, you want a team where you can look at the roster and you've got one or two of their key players where, hey, we're up four, we're trying to nurse a lead, and you can throw it to one guy that's 90%. Even if the team isn't great overall, you want one or two guys that are like the 80 85%. You want at least a couple guys that are those uh, those safety valves where you can put the game away and you have at least a couple guys you trust that are you know in the 80s or above, at least at least to throw the ball to when uh, when you need to ice it. So I've got Houston, UK in the final four, or in the Elite Eight, excuse me. Um, but let me share what somebody told me on Sunday. He said, one of the first bets I made was Colorado to make like the that. final four at 125 to one. Wow. And I said, you're crazy. And he said, yeah, but it's still a good bet. Um, <laughs> they've got they've got three NBA guys. Yeah, and right. I, think, yes. I think you look at a team that's sort of getting healthy at the right time. You know, they go to the Pac-12 championship game, lost to a very hot Oregon team that you guys have been talking about for months now. You know, Cody Williams could be the first overall pick in the draft. He could be. There's a world where that's a thing. Um, but you you face Marquette early with Kolek a little banged up. If Kentucky can't get stops, Colorado could definitely get into that game against Houston. It's not my bet, but 125 to 1 on Colorado is a bet from a guy that I really, really respect. No, and you're looking at a, looking at a Boise. How the reaction of Boise on Sunday night, like when oh yeah. you're a you're a ten and you're in a playing game, like yeah, I don't know like what type of like how they're going to respond to, like do they do they feel like slighted and come out and play with their hair on fire or are they are they are they down? But you're you're right. Colorado's a team that early in the year a lot of people were. Uh, were on a lot of people thought pretty highly of, and then they went through a lull in conference in top 12 conference play. But if you if you look at the draw, like that, Sammy, that's not a terrible bet at all. No, Just, you, you get you get a short-handed Florida team. You get like you said, Marquette in, in, in Shaka has not been a good coach to, tournament wise since the, uh, the the VCU run, uh, and then maybe you get Texas uh, Kentucky like. I can. There, there are worse bets to be made. Like I might have to. Uh, I might have to hop in on that. I mean, you bet a dollar and you went 125. I think we could all afford a dollar better. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I, I don't know. After uh, after Novak dropped a uh, dropped a game dropped uh, dropped a uh, a match last week against the. Uh, I forgot the name of the uh, the Italian that he that he dropped the first set to, and I decided to hop in. Nardi, Nardi. Yeah, yeah, and my man, my man, Mike Nardi. And that's not Mike Nardi, and, but and Wyndham Clark missed the putt, so yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah exactly. So yeah, but I, <laughs> I, I don't have to. Maybe I can go through my uh, my my loose change jug at home and and, and funnel together some uh, some money to bet the the Colorado Buffaloes. That oh, was great. impressive how Sammy did that math on the fly, though. A dollar to win at 125, the 125 to one. I was impressed with that. I did. I was going to put it in my calculator. I was going to be like one times 125. Carry the one. Lamp, Lampkin, the TC. Like, how, how funny would it be if with all the talk about Colorado football and Deion Sanders, Basketball, like, yes, sir. Coach Prime, if, 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 if it's – if it's CU, my man Tad Boyle, it's CU hoops getting to the Final Four. Like how does, how, does Ralphie how show up to the Final Four? Do we get Ralphie at the Final Four? I root for that. 
I'll put some. I'd love to see that. Just run on the court before the game, though. No? Yeah, yeah, you have Ralphie running around uh, what State Farm Stadium in there. Like they get natural grass, right? Sammy, would you be surprised to learn I have a physical calculator at my desk? Would you that would that surprise you? Like an actual old school calculator? No. I'm no, not surprised by anything anymore. Yeah, not surprised nope. by me at all. Yeah. You nope. mentioned calculator. It's right here. It's it's how I add, add everything up. Is that Actual, how you text crack? You text yeah, it on the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. I do. It's my calculator. It just happened to be right here. You mentioned your calculator. I love Colorado, man. They have the they have the formula we talk about, right? Right. Point guard play, good interior defense. They got the big fell on the inside. They have everything that you sort of get to, from time to time for these final four teams. And what's the number, Bear? I'm sure you have this, right? The one winner of the play-in game has made the Sweet 16 every year. Is that what it is? Or something close to that? Yeah, they have the play-in sure. game. I know UCLA did that a few years back when they had the play-in game. They thought they were disrespected to get there. Um, and look, Colorado has the play-in game. They play well. And then, boom, they end up in the, in the Sweet 16. And once you're in there, you know, anything's possible at that point. Yeah, I think these play-in teams, they get a game under their belt. They feel good about themselves. They see the ball go through the hoop. And look, I mean, you don't want to be in the playing game because it is one extra chance to lose. But once you win it, it's strangely, I think, an advantage where the other team you're playing is coming in cold. You're, uh, you know, you got that one game under your belt. So it does make some sense that we do see some runs here from these playing teams. So I wouldn't be shocked if Colorado goes on a run. So while, while financially, I think we're all going to be rooting for, uh, for Colorado, maybe at 125 to one. I, I hate doing it. Sammy, because it feels like everybody is picking Kentucky, but I, I just I'm going to take Kentucky come out to come out of here. I, I don't want to, because every bracket I've seen by all the talking heads on TV has had Kentucky, uh, but just my concern with Houston and in, in, in their inability to score at times. I, I think we will get it. I think ultimately we will get a Kentucky Houston uh, elite game eight game. How would you feel about mm -hmm. that? Would you would you be concerned about Houston or would you feel pretty good in that matchup, Sammy? I'd be concerned that Calipari plays the defensive lineup against Houston, which would, uh, I'd jump out the window if he did that, but it's not, <laughs> it's not unthinkable there. I mean, this is a guy, remember, that had Devin Booker and played him less than 20 minutes a game. Devin Booker scored 70 points this year in the NBA, and Cal's like, eh, I'm going to play the Harrison Twins a little bit more in college. So, <laughs> That's my concern. I mean, it's so easy. The, the game plan for Houston, if you're Kentucky, is death lineup. It's it's the three freshmen, it's Reeves, and it's Big Z. You stop us. If if they throw Wagner and the two seven-footers out there against Houston, I will jump out the window. Because if you try <laughs> to slugfest Houston, you will lose. But that's Cal, though. That's Cal in a nutshell. He's... I saw him the other day, and I don't want to get too deep into this, but we're about to get into the freaking tournament, guys. And Cal's like, yeah, you know, I might change my lineup a little bit. I'm like, we're still changing the lineup. The tournament starts on Thursday, and he's still trying to change his rotations. Drives me insane. But I have Kentucky winning the region. I, I will say, though, the Colorado number has moved a lot, Sammy. Uh, I, one, one, one has him only 3,500. To win uh, oh. thirty-five to one, so like it's wow. I, I saw that's a forty a horrible to one. Number. I you saw win five games, thirty-five oh, to one. That's a horrible I saw hor I saw a forty to one. So I saw an, I saw an eighty to one. I, that that one twenty-five is long disappeared. Thirty doesn't take much, Jeff. A couple of men to one twenty-five. <laughs> thirty-five to one on a team to win five games. Oh my god! Wear a mask and a gun. Oh. <laughs> and. and People will bet it because they just wanted to, they have no idea of, of the math and involved in how terrible of a price that like, like that's a clear situation of a, of a money line of a money line roll over the wall. So, sounds like more of a fair price to make the sweet 16. Cause you got to win three games just to yeah. make the sweet 16. That sounds like more of a 35 to one, the final four, 35 to one. My goodness. That, that's yes. offensive. South, that is actually South, offensive. South region winner, Colorado plus 3,500. Don't do it. Don't bet thirty. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying that 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 price is has changed a lot now. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't I'm not. I don't want to ask what what site that is because I don't want any 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 negative repercussions. And we'll 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 let whatever people. I don't want to know. I don't know. But uh, Kentucky, of course, one of those teams lost their first conference tournament game. Tennessee, Creighton, Kentucky, Duke. Kansas, Alabama, they're all top four seeds, lost their first conference tournament game, of course. No team that's lost their first conference tournament game has won uh, the national title. So uh, historical outlier, I guess the, the, the thing being, if you can lose to 
a team that you're playing in your first conference tournament game, you can lose to anybody. So, Will, where 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 are we going here? We're gonna we're gonna saddle Kentucky with some more weight here. You're gonna go elsewhere. I picked Florida to come out, then I crossed them off, and I went with Kentucky. I couldn't get myself to do it. Um, I, I'm going with Kentucky, so we're all uh, we're all on the same page here, I think, right? You know what? I'm gonna pick Kentucky just because I'm rooting for Sammy to be right. I don't want to. I don't want Sammy's heart to be broken. I don't, I don't want him to I get agree. spanking behind the shed. So I'll go with I'll go with Kentucky here just to make Sammy happy. But they could lose to Oakland too. So uh, yeah, I, I saw Vitale. Vitale was like, "Kentucky's awesome with a capital yep. A," and I'm like, "No, <laughs> like, Kentucky's the worst." I'm Everybody. just happy to hear Dick talking again. That that that's yes. the thing. Mm, After true. everything he's been through, I mean, my, my man who lo- loves to. I mean, there isn't a guy who loves to talk more and joke and be a part of it. He, he he couldn't like say a word and speak for months because of his vocal cord cancer. I, I'm I'm just I'm just happy he's 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 uh doing well now. The one the one before we move on to the final the final region, the Midwest, we talked about Kentucky, how you just said something, and it's just kind of a spontaneous question that I, I'm gonna throw out. And if anybody has an answer, yes, if not, like is there a team in this tournament that has a greater range of than Kentucky? You just joked they could lose to o- like lose to Oakland or win the national championship. Like that's a pretty wide range. Like, is there any other team out there that you could potentially say the same thing thing about? Like, I guess you could joke at Tennessee could lose to St. Peter's or win the or win the national title. Like, is there anyone else out there that is it is extreme as Kentucky? Do you think? I think Creighton is right there. Creighton's very good in a lot of ways, but but Creighton faces a very tough Akron team that that got a lot of money early in Vegas. They took 14, they took 13 and a half, took 13. Um, that that number got whacked right away, and that's always something that makes your eyes open, at least for me. Um, I have Creighton. We'll talk about it in a second. I have them making a pretty deep run. But I wouldn't be surprised if they lost to Akron, not not for one second. So I think their range is really high. But no, I think you nailed it, man. The Kentucky thing is is super accordion esque. Like it could go it could go very drastically left or right. Yeah, we touched on Houston. If they have one off shooting nights, they could lose that second round matchup, which is tricky with A and M in Nebraska. I'll throw a different one in. This is obviously not a vintage Kansas team, but they are very. Uh, they're hard to figure because they, they might be a better live situation just because of the health. If those two guys are healthy, which we don't know, Dickinson and, and McCullough, that's one team. If they're not healthy, it's a completely different team, and Sanford might beat them. So Kansas, just based on health, I think, is is one team that I have a hard time putting my finger on. Now, moving on to that final Midwest region where Purdue is the number one seed for the second straight year. I don't think we need to rehash what happened uh, last year against FDU. And of course, the, it's like the committee like wants to have like the the, the feel good story and get the albatross uh, off of Purdue, or or as one of my good friends uh, puts it, one suit Rick uh, with, with Tennessee and Rick Barnes only needs one suit because he's not going to get out of the uh, of the first the first weekend. So uh, you got Purdue, you got Tennessee is two of the bigger. Uh, <laughs> What what that disappointment, underachiever, whatever. Underachiever, underachieve. The thing, thing is, the, underachieve. the thing is, prior to last year, Purdue really wasn't like like they had good runs uh, in, in the tournament. Ever after they always weren't earned as a one seed, but uh, yeah, I, I think I think Tennessee is the is the underachiever. And again, if you look at the last eighteen games, Rick Barnes, the head coach, his teams are three fourteen and one. Wow, He's made it past the first weekend twice in eleven trips. And he's never beaten a team seated higher, 0 and 7. That's since the uh, Texas Elite Eight run in, in 2008. So there, there, they, there they are. All the all the negative uh, Rick Barnes numbers we, that we certainly know about, uh, and certainly we know Purdue last three years. You've lost to a 16, a 15, and a 13 the last three tournaments. First team ever to be eliminated by a team 12th or lower in three consecutive tournaments. So. There they are. There, there, there's the, uh, there's the gloom and doom for for Purdue and Tennessee, the top two seeds. The number three, is Creighton, and the number four is Kansas. So, uh, if if you look if you look at this region, in, in terms of w- one of these top three seeds getting bounced in 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 the first weekend, I don't think Purdue will lose to to Utah State or TC. I mean Utah State, the team that. Came, really came out of nowhere. And if you look at Jamie Dixon and, and TCU, like 
Like he hasn't made it out of the first weekend in in like forever. So like TCU is a team that I I had higher hopes for, but I, I just can't see them. So I do think Purdue will get out. I think Tennessee is a team that has to worry. Like, and I, and I say because if you look at their potential second round opponent, you're either going to have Texas, and you know the story there, or maybe you get UVA, and UVA is going to slow that game down to a crawl, and then we'll see how Tennessee reacts. So if if you're look and can Akron beat Creighton? Sure. Uh, could could go Creighton lose to South Carolina or Oregon? Sure. But but I, I think. Just because of the storylines, if I had to pick one of those top three seats to go out early, uh, Tennessee would be the way I would lean well. I don't know if – I don't like Virginia against Colorado State, too, and again, we're trying to stay away from these playing games. I think if right. Colorado State got past Virginia, which I, I expect them to, I think with the coach, I think with their defense, I think they could present some things that would bother Tennessee. It's funny. You mentioned Tennessee and Purdue. It uh, sparked a painful memory. I think it was 2019 I had a fat future on Tennessee, and they were up late against Purdue. They rallied back, and I think they fouled a three-point shooter late it was a it was a very shaky call it should not have been a foul and then uh purdue went on that was a great game against virginia the next round in in that crazy comeback for yep. uh, virginia but uh, i pretty much agree with everything you said colorado state's a, a team to keep an eye on this isn't a bracket i love um i i, I do like creighton i like their offense they get a lot at the rim foul uh, they don't foul they get a lot of threes a lot at the rim so they were almost in the final four last year uh, I, I like this creighton team I like them too, man. I, I totally agree. I've got them going really far in this bracket, but that second game against South Carolina or Oregon is, is going to be a war. And I think that's a fascinating game too, right? Because if you made South Carolina, Oregon five days ago, the, the number's three and a half or four, but Oregon wins the PAC 12 and, you know, they opened the pick them at the South point. And I'm like, wow, that's cheap. And mm. we've seen that game talk money come in from pick to one to one and a half. So that's going to be a great game that South Carolina, Oregon game. And, and that, that winner could give Creighton everything in that second game, but I do have Creighton going far. So maybe I'm just hedging on this podcast. I have Creighton losing to Oregon. So we're not going very far for me. <laughs> um, so I look, I, I'll just say this. Um, the last two times that Oregon has made the tournament as a double digit seed because they won the Pac-12 tournament, they made the sweet 16. They are a team under Altman who really excels when they get hot. And part of their issues this year is they have lost the most minutes by far to injury of any rotation players. And they're getting guys a little bit healthy now. And when Dante can stay out of foul trouble, which is a huge problem of his, they can beat nearly anybody. When he's in foul trouble, they, they, their entire team changes. And so if they can continue this hot streak, I think they do get to the second weekend based off of the success they've had over the years. And they're, they're healthier now than they have been all season long. Yeah, if, if I had to pick a team like fourth or lower in this region to get to the final four, it, it would be Oregon uh, just because of what what you talked about, all the injuries that they've had and, and Altman being such a good tournament coach. It, it's, it's weird, Sammy. You mentioned the money shown on South Carolina. Like, I wonder, like South Carolina is another team that I've kind of had uh, mixed success with this year, betting against, because you, you look at them and you just, you wonder how they keep winning games like they, they're they're good on the offensive glass, getting sick of it. Like they, they just, I can't get there with them. And and you just wonder if they're going to be one of these teams that during the regular season, they've had all this luck and good fortune and found a way to win. And then come tournament time, they're going to throw up a clunker, and a team like Oregon could be there to capitalize. Yeah, look, I didn't I didn't bet South Carolina, but I think from a numerical standpoint, there were a lot of people that were thinking that game was going to open a lot higher than it did. And I think it was DraftKings FanDuel opened at one and then South Point opens at pick. And I, I imagine there were some power rankings people that were very happy to lay pick. And that's the whole SEC also against Pac-12 angle. I mean, some groups think the SEC is the best conference in the country. We'll find out. We'll yep. find out. But I know there were people that were very happy to lay pick with the Gamecocks. Which uh, which of these uh, twelve or lowers do do you guys like to potentially pull a uh, a first round upset? Jeff, start with you. I, I feel like the, the, Oregon because Oregon's an eleven. 
Other eleven. No, Oregon will be my final four pick. Don't worry, it's coming up soon. Um, I, I feel like I feel like Stanford, right? If if Kansas is injured, that's the big what if. They're the team. They have six guys that shoot over thirty eight percent from the three point line. They can really score. They, they can really score. Um, and if Kansas is hurt, they're not going to win that game. But again, we don't know that obviously until tip time. Who's going to be healthy and who's not? So, I, I'm saying Stanford for now um, could change if Kansas is healthy. Will? Yeah, the game where I could see anything like it could be in a swing game where I could see like Gonzaga winning this game and making a run, or I could see McNeese beating them. I think either of those is plausible because I just I don't know what to make of McNeese with this schedule. Obviously, the record's gaudy. We know Wade uh, for all of his issues as a coach, and I guess most of what he got in trouble for is pretty much legal now. But Gonzaga, <laughs> maybe, maybe Gonzaga goes in this tournament and says, you know what, we're, we're not a one seed. We don't have a pressure being undefeated. Of you know, can we get it done in the tournament? They can come in this tournament as more of a sleeper, more of an underdog, and maybe that helps. Them and if they can get by McNeese, maybe they're uh, maybe they're playing deep into this tournament. So that's an interesting game where I could see them losing or I could see them making a deep run. You know, that's not profound, but uh, that that's a fascinating game for me. So we're going to move on here and talk a little bit about who we like coming out of the Midwest region, get to the Final Four. And you can see you can see Will, you can see Jeff, and unfortunately, uh, Sammy's in Vegas, and, and and I guess the sports book wherever Sammy is staying there got got hit up pretty good over the weekend because uh, it appears the the internet went out at Sammy's uh <laughs> Sammy's hotel. So uh, Sammy's with us. You can hear him. You can't see him, which is a uh, we, we at least for for your listeners, we're gonna we're gonna get all of Sammy's uh information via phone. But yeah, uh, no 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 more seeing Sammy. But I, I'm gonna start with you, Sammy. Who do you see? You see what I did there? Uh, coming out of the uh, the Midwest region and getting to the Final Four, there you got uh, top seed Purdue, second seed Tennessee, third seed Creighton, and fourth seed Kansas, and a, and a bunch of other stuff. What do what, 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 what you think in there? Well, first of all, I'm sure in some weird way I look better without video. <laughs> like, that's, that's probably a thing. Um, I got Creighton coming out. I think that's, you know, the region of uh, uncertainty. You know, if Purdue and Tennessee meet in that regional final, the world might end. <laughs> nobody's going to want to win. Uh, so I did put Creighton through. Uh, I think they have, you know, we talked about it earlier. Their range is just insane. They could be very, very high, very, very low. But I, I do think them getting to that game against San Diego State last year, losing in heartbreaking fashion, bringing almost everybody back. I like McDermott a lot. I did throw Creighton through bottom right of the region. Yeah, my bet on Sammy plus 800 to lose his Fox laptop at the blackjack table comes through. So I'm already playing with house money here. Uh, I'm with Sammy, though. I'm going to go with Creighton. I like their shot diet. I just think they get a lot at the rim. They get a lot of threes. Anyone that can beat UConn by 15, 20 points, whatever they beat them by, is enough to get my attention. They don't foul defensively. They were very close last year to getting to the uh, Final Four. They really could have won that game against San Diego State. I think they get over the hump this year. I'm going to have Creighton in the Final Four. Jeffrey? I don't feel great about it, but I'm going to take Purdue. I just think from from what we've seen last year, how that bounced back, that we saw Virginia a couple of years ago sort of make that same run. Uh, I think Purdue makes it to the Final Four. I don't know think they win it all, but I think they exercise some some demons here, Bear, and, and get it done. Because, look, the way I told you guys, I think Oregon beats Craves. That takes Crane out of it for me, uh, and that, that leaves Purdue left standing. Purdue, seven times been a top two seed, never reached the, uh, the Final Four as a top two seed. So uh, we'll see if they can uh, – Continue the uh, the Virginia narrative from a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I I went with Creighton too, and again, we, we, uh, myself, Sammy, and Will are on them. Uh, again, they're they're a team that I had them in the Final Four last year at a really nice number, and uh, again, I'm still not over that San Diego State loss, but but I think the the Jays have a great opportunity to get there. Uh, in order to do that, uh, they would have to beat Purdue. Uh, to to get to the final four and and, and, and Sammy, you wrote a, a nice little column earlier in the week on a prop that's out there, Purdue and UConn uh, versus the field, and, and and I we haven't revealed our title picks yet as to who ultimately we think will win, but but it sounds like if if you were off on this Purdue and UConn versus the field, it sounds like the. Uh, the four of us might be on the uh, on the field side. What what did uh, what did the people you spoke to about that have to say about it? Yeah, it's a great prop at Circa, and I talked to Jeff Benson, who's you know very high on the operational food chain there, and and they just decided that you know we're going to put Purdue and UConn on one side because they at the time they put the market up it was Purdue, UConn, and Houston, and they said well we 
we can't give you all three of them. So let's find the theoreticals and let's do the math and play it out. And they uh, wound up with Purdue UConn against everybody else. And I, <laughs> I just can't with Purdue guys. I just can't. I mean, they haven't been to a final four since 1980. And I, I also think there's a lot of, there's a lot of uncertainty for me on do the officials know how to officiate Zach Eady? I, I know it's, mm-hmm. it's big 10 season and he's getting every call, but in the big dance, is he that favorable? Is he getting 20, 25 free throws? And I just don't think that's going to happen. So uh, for that bet, I would certainly take the field. Uh, it's, you know, almost a 250, 270 favorite. I would, I would lay it for sure. Um, I almost think they're in some weird way. Like I'd rather just bet UConn to win the whole thing at you know, 455 to one than bet UConn and Purdue, if that makes any sense. You know, I, I think that's I think that's a better way to to do it for sure. Like like, like what would what 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 was the, what was the no price on the field? So the no as of as of this morning, uh, no Purdue UConn was minus two seventy. So in theory, if we don't like Purdue, you, you lay the no on, on the two seventy, no Purdue or UConn, and we don't. So like no UConn or and then you can take UConn at plus four four hundred or four like, and if. If, and then that, that might be a uh, yeah. You could play play with around that way. I, by the way, I looked at the uh, the FDU game last year. Zach Eady took ten free throws uh, in 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 the game, so it, lo- it looked like he. Um, and if I remember correctly, weren't a, weren't most of those in the second half? Like like finally they realized let's get the ball inside to Zach Eady. Yeah. And, uh, so they, they, you're right. That is definitely a big thing uh, in the Big Ten where we're. Uh, opponents of Purdue certainly think he gets a uh, a fair whistle. So, all right, Jeff, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who do we got? I'm I'm taking UConn here, so I would take the plus money, and I wouldn't take the the wager same. I just take UConn plus the 450, whatever it is, um, or 400 right now. Um, I just don't I don't really trust anyone else. That's that's part of it. UConn's done this before, obviously. Um, they are in, in a bracket of death, right? They're in the toughest bracket. We get that. Um, but I don't trust any of the team. I don't, we talked about Houston's offense and Purdue and Arizona. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know where else to go unless it's somewhere way off the board. So I, I'll, I'm going to be boring and take UConn. Will? Committee obviously did them no favors, but I, I can't find a team that I think is going to beat them again. I just think they can win in so many different ways. The size, the shooting. I don't know that you're getting some great bargain if you're getting four to one with the bracket, with the gauntlet they have to go through. But UConn's my national champ. We're going to see a back-to-back champ for the first time in, what, 15 years here? So UConn does it again. Sammy? Yeah, I hope it's Kentucky. I mean, that's that's what I've been saying <laughs> since November. So I am, I am going to die on that hill if I have to. Uh, Calipari makes me nervous. But this is, you know, to me, it's the most talented team uh, since he had Carl Anthony Towns and Willie Cauley-Stein and the Harrison Twins and Devin Booker. And that team went all the way to the Final Four and uh, lost to Wisconsin, who eventually lost to Duke. So I, I believe in talent, I believe in skill, and I believe in their offense. And I just I hope that I hope that Cal stops doing that defensive lineup thing. You know, he's been playing Dillingham and Shepard together, but he puts them in eight minutes too late. You know, it feels like. So I I think if they go death lineup and they just try and make you stop them, they are the most dangerous team in the country. But at the end of the day, they're also eighteen and nineteen years old. So. I'm willing to mess around and find out, Bear. That's for sure on Kentucky. I hope I hope you mess around, find out, and you're rewarded for it. And it, it, I hope maybe with the last lack of success that Cal has had in the tournament lately, maybe he will just kind of say screw it, and he will throw that line about that that you're calling for because clearly what he's done the last few years and the way he's tried to to match things up hasn't worked. So I uh, mean, maybe he will just roll the ball out there with those guys and, and go at it. It's boring, but I'm going to go with UConn as well. I, I think they're the best team. Uh, I think maybe this – here's the here's the contrarian look at this thing. It, 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 maybe this region of death isn't all it's cracked up to be. You, you look, well, UConn last year, they had Gonzaga and UCLA, UCLA right in the region as well. Like, like yes, they were in a, yeah. in a difficult region last year. If you're if you're the best team, you're good. You're gonna find a way to win ultimately. But if you want to say, hey, Iowa State's a two seed that 
maybe has some flaws offensively, maybe upset prone, got hot late. Illinois, a three seed, can't stop anybody. We talked about that earlier. Again, got hot, won the Big Ten tournament. Four seed Auburn um, won the SEC tournament. Uh, don't necessarily have a bunch of great wins. And maybe maybe there are flaws in all of these other teams that we all suddenly love right now, and maybe we're putting too much stock into their conference tournament performances. UConn, they've done it all year. They're, they're deep. they got a bunch of different guys who can beat you. And maybe, maybe they definitely have a little bit of a uh, – uh, privately a, li- a little bit of a, a chip and they're pissed off maybe with the draw and how they're the number one overall seed. And now they – they have to go through this perceived run. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go UConn. It's not sexy, but, yeah, we'd be the first team since Florida in 2006-2007 to uh, to repeat, and no one's even gotten past the uh, the Sweet 16 uh, defending national champions since that Florida team in 2007. So it's been a while since the defending champ had some success, but I do think uh, UConn's the best team, and I, I guess none of us will look dumb for picking UConn to repeat. I can't see them going out early. What about on the um? What about on the women's side? I I know uh, Jeff, you got a uh, a nice play on yeah. South Carolina, right? Yeah, it's a, it's about plus one ten. I mean, it's I took it a while ago. Um, I was still playing at minus one thirty five. I, they're just they're too big, they're too deep, uh, they're too long. I mean, I Iowa is Iowa's a three seed, right? And they're plus six hundred. That's just playing off Caitlin Clark. Um, LSU was lost South Carolina. Uh, the one, the one other team that it's a maybe is USC. I believe is plus four thousand. Uh, Juju Watkins is really good, and they're they're one seed. Like it's not like they're a, a scrub team here. Um, maybe USC can make a run, but I just don't think anyone's beating. Like USC is not big enough to beat South Carolina, so I just think South Carolina's going to win. And laying one thirty five, I think will is totally worth it still. Yeah, South Carolina probably wins this tournament. I will say, though, I'll go a little off the grid here. The 31 and 1 Fairfield Stags getting 24 points against Indiana. What about what, what disrespect? 23 0 in conference. <laughs> Their one loss was the second game of the season in Vanderbilt by a couple of points. Indiana's on upset alert here. The 24 is too many. Maybe sprinkle a little Ooh. money line disrespect here for my lady Stags. Sammy, any thoughts on the women's bracket? Oh, yeah, I love Bear. I love South Carolina minus 6,000 to make the Sweet 16. I think that's a great look. <laughs> you have been talking I, to Fezzik? Yeah, yeah, I was actually. Fezzik loves it too. Minus 6,000, boys and girls, to make the Sweet 16. You got to lay that to win 100. Uh, Iowa minus 1,600 to Sweet 16. I'm not laying those. I Look, I'm going to take a shot on Clark. I, I know they're probably not going to win it but she is the most fun athlete right now to gamble yes. on. He is, you know, betting her live in that big 10 championship on the money line when they were plus plus one thirty and they're down 10 points was the most fun gambling I've had all year. He just, he keeps you in every game. And I, I agree with Jeff South Carolina is rightfully favored, but it is more fun to bet on Caitlin Clark than it is on maybe any athlete right now. Yeah. And for me, I'm, I'm willing to go down at six to one on Iowa to win the whole thing. It's probably not going to win, but I'll have fun all the way down the shoot. I'm right. I, I, don't, I don't know why I said Iowa was a three seed. They're one seed. It was LSU. That, that was a three seed from, from last season. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, look, I, I think there's ways to, to play this. Um, I will say though, I looked at some of the numbers and I, I probably can't wager on many of these, but in the first round, guys, the one and two seeds, they kick butt. Like, they win by 30-plus. Now, some of the numbers are like 35 and a half right now for Stanford to, to cover that game or UConn minus in the 30s area. Like, I don't know if I can wager on them right now. People might have caught on. But the 16 seeds do not score points, and they get blown out. So maybe there's a play there. I haven't done all the research on those yet. But the first round, you can make some money betting these big favorites. Will, so you're going to take the points with Fairfield when they play South Carolina in the Sweet 16 in Albany? I'll have so much money in the account by then with the two upsets over what uh, uh, Indiana, <laughs> maybe Gulf Coast or Oklahoma, that I'll I'll have some money to play with. So I'll uh, if it comes to that, I'll take Fairfield against South Carolina and I'll buy Sammy a new computer. <laughs> there we go, perfect. It seems like Texas is the one is the one seed that nobody's really talking about. Be curious to see if the uh, if Texas can make a uh, you, you can, UConn can't win it, right? UConn's not good enough. I don't think so. I don't think so. I, 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 don't, I don't. I don't think they are. I mean, they, they were they, 
I mean, I, I guess you're you're in a region there with, with USC and Ohio State where uh, that would they're be what, they're sixteen to one. Yeah, I mean, it, it's tempting. It's it's certain it's certainly tempting, but I don't know. Could they get, could they get to the final four, or the yeah. or the title I, game? I, 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 isn't it just weird that USC is a one seed and they're plus four thousand to win the tournament? Right. Yeah, isn't, isn't, isn't that a little bit off? You know, it just goes to show the the difference between the 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 selection committee and what they're looking at compared to uh, the actual data and how good these teams are with it, that the odds makers use to uh, to set to set their lines. I do think South Carolina will ultimately win. No, I mean I think well, so too. What 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 fun in that? It taking a bit of any it even money or so. So imagine if you're in a coma for a few years and you wake up and the first thing you see is UConn women are sixteen to one to win the title. I mean they were <laughs> buying it. They were the South Carolina. I mean they were so dominant for so many years. They had entire classes of girls that like didn't lose their entire career. Now oh, they're yeah. sixteen to one. Shows how things change. Certainly. So, Sammy, best of luck with Kentucky. Will, best of luck with the Fairfield. Lady Stags getting getting points against Indiana. Jeff, best of luck with the Oregon Ducks. Thank you. Me, best of luck with life. I, I need it right now. <laughs> Appreciate you guys joining us as, as always on that gambling group chat. Kicked around a lot of stuff. So uh hopefully people found it entertaining and find some uh some winning wagers in there. Appreciate you guys. Wow, what a what a great gambling group chat there, Bear. We covered all four of the regions, lots of wagers. Hope you guys paid attention to everything. That we said, and I just hope Kentucky wins for for Sammy P, so buddy, because he's going to be so heartbroken if they can't get this done. All right, Bear, best bets time. What is your best bet for the opening weekend of the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I, I alluded to it earlier with the uh, the Texas Tech NC State game. Uh, I like Texas Tech minus five. I think there might have been a four and a half out there, but it seems to be five pretty much everywhere. Uh, I think the Red Raiders defensively. We'll have a little bit too much for NC State, who had well, a great run by Keats and crew to, to win uh, the ACC tournament. But still, they needed a lot of good fortune from Virginia at the free throw line to do that. Uh, Trailed versus Louisville late. Uh, and I think Texas Tech, these Big 12 teams typically do very well uh, in the NCAA tournament, especially in the first round. So I think I think Tech defensively uh, kind of slow down the Wolfpack a little bit. And I like... Uh, I like the Red Raiders minus the five is my best bet. I, I think Tech might go far in the tournament, so I'm with you on this one coming up big. Uh, I'm going with maybe what I know best, but also what I've seen over the years with Oregon uh, in round one. Dana Altman's squad has not lost a first-round game since he has been there, and in the two times that he has been a double-digit seed, he's actually made the Sweet 16. Also worth noting, Dana Altman is a very profitable coach. In the postseason, Bear, 15-5-1 against a spread as the Oregon head coach. When they are hot, they are moving, they are winning games, and they are more healthy now. They're playing good basketball finally. I think they get it done against South Carolina. I'll take the Ducks plus a couple points here. Um, money line, whatever way you want to play them. I don't know what the number will be at eventually at, at tip-off here. Sammy mentioned, though, Bear, a lot of uh, sharps at South Carolina uh, immediately, which doesn't make me feel great about this wager, but I just do know how Oregon plays uh, in these games, I'll take Oregon. Well, I'll make you feel better about your wager. And as you probably are aware, uh, Dana Altman, 6-0 against the number, 6-0 straight up in the first round as the head coach at Oregon in the NCAA tournament. So hopefully I'll, I'll leave you with that little bit of positivity of for, for for your ducks to uh, – by the way, we we got a night, we got a, a ridiculous number on them to make the Final Four. So uh, we, we we do, yeah. We're it's, we're all we're, good. We're, we're, we're wearing Oregon colors and we're wearing Kentucky colors on this uh, on, on this pot, I guess for, uh, for for teamwork. And then obviously I got I got some Auburn tickets as well, so we'll see what we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, that, that was that was fun kicking it around with everybody. Hopefully we covered enough for people in in, in a consumable fashion. I know we got, kind of got rambling a little bit at times, but uh, you want to get so much in, and there's so many different thoughts that pop up. Uh, I'm gonna have a. a a column up on foxsports.com that will have some some picks and some other notes and some numbers that'll probably uh, be up either uh, late late Tuesday or early Wednesday. Um, Sammy P's got his columns up. Will and in he's got got some picks out there as well. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're we're offering up as much as uh so we get to make sure you check out that website and. Um, for all the uh, the digital content that we have, and appreciate you as always for uh, for downloading our podcast, the Bear Bets Podcast, wherever you 
download and consume your podcasts. Appreciate you watching on YouTube. Continue to review, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, well, I shouldn't say a couple of weeks. We'll be back next week. Yeah. With a, with a little update, uh, Sweet 16 kind of preview. We'll have a, uh, a baseball uh, baseball betting preview. Will and, will and Ben Verlander will be a part of that. Um, Sammy as well. So yeah, we we got some we got some maybe some master stuff coming. So yeah, we we're, we're going to be with you a little bit regularly coming up here for the next uh, few weeks or so. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll have some uh, some winning tickets to talk about. Some maybe good potential uh, w- w- winning tickets in around. Hopefully we'll have some good luck this weekend. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>